How's it going, YouTube? We're taking a short break from car videos to do a little bit more tech videos. I know I had an HP Atanium system that I still need to redo a video on, so in the meantime, while I'm waiting on a replacement board because I think I smoked a VRM in that Atanium system, we are going to start work on my NT domain I'd like to build. I've saved a couple of these Compact Pro Alliance over the years. This one happens to be a ProLiant M370 Gen 3. So it's a 604 base system and they run the Netburst variant of the Xeons. But this is just the hardware form. I'll get to the software if I can find a good way to capture video on I guess the VGA output or just set up the camera by the monitor get the flicker rate down because I know that bothers a lot of people but so this is just gonna be a short sweet to the point hardware and description of the server so this is probably going to be the main server or what you would think of as the big bad server of the NT domain it's a 5U system and it's got all oh, handles and by God does it actually weigh 60 to 90 pounds. I can't imagine what it would weigh with the drives in it. So, to, if you've never opened one of these, you press right here and you shove it back. Sometimes shove is the right word because <laughs> they get stuck from time to time. But, this is the interior of the system. So, back you got all these nice removable fans. They all seem to work. I haven't powered this system on. The seller said it did work. And we'll see. I don't expect it not to work. These compact systems were very, very nice and very reliable from what I've heard and have seen. So, now granted I'm a youngster. This thing was top of the line back when I was just knee high. So, but we're going to start with the processors. So, I haven't spec'd the highest processors. That's how you get the fan shroud out of the way. But I believe they are 2.8 gigahertz variants. Well, heck, I can grab them right here. I got them right over here. This is the current hardware we're adding. My hard drives and my caddies have not come in yet. And I'll explain more about that when we get to that. But I've got a matched pair of these old... Oh, I better turn it around. Systems, if you can see it. I'm not sure if you can. It, yeah, they are 2.8 gigahertz. I think they're hyper-threaded as well. 512k of ram 533 front side bus these are sl6 vn variants so you come over here you say oh i want to add it to processor one now if you have a heatsink you just have to make sure while you're moving it you can't even see the dang socket is that these hp slash compact rely on this to be open before you put the heatsink in that way it locks it in in a certain spot. Yeah, I'm going the right way. And it's always fun trying to line these pins up. I have a great time. You can't even see my hand, but it's because I didn't think I'd struggle this. There we go. So it's in. And then you grab your heatsink. This part, little tab here, faces this way. It's got four little pegs it drops down onto. I've already applied thermal paste on the back side and sorry for the camera wobble you just put it down and there you go she's pretty secure I hope the original processor and I'll grab it was a slightly older 2.5 gigahertz variant this thing is monstrous it's the it looks like a Pentium 4 on top of a 604 processor but yeah, this one's also a 2.8, but with a 400 megahertz front side bus. And you can see, comparative to the new stuff, reach over and grab it, the size difference. Quite a difference. This is a very early chip. This is a much later chip. But as far as I know, the documentation says these new chips are supported. So, oh, better not damage that. So, you pull this tab up, slide it out of the way. Make sure it's in the open position. Check your pins. You want your two gaps on each side to face this way. And now we shall, with much camera wobble, put it down in here. I may have to readjust my hands, slide it over. There we go. Nice and in there. 
So while we're doing that, grab the heatsink, line up the tab, make sure it slots down on there nicely. It should. I don't see why it wouldn't. And then we close this so it rests over the tab so this doesn't go nowhere. Now, if for some reason the clearance is wrong for these heat sinks, I couldn't quite find the Gen 4s, which would probably fit this style better, but I will update that with an eBay link in my description or the top comment. No big deal. We'll test this out at a later date. This is just getting all the hardware in there. So, this is a DDR1 based system, obviously with 604, but since I want this to be the mainstay of my domain, I have splurged a little bit on 2 gigabyte ECC. Oh, this is PC2100 registered, 266 megahertz memory. So there's six of them. So that should give us 12 gigabytes. And you might be wondering, but NT4 doesn't support more than 4 gigabytes. It's a 32 bit operating system. Well, normally you'd be right, but I'm going to use PAE and perhaps the Enterprise Edition of NT4 server. That way we can really make a bang for our buck. Or Terminal Server. I'm not quite sure what I want to do with it yet. So we will find out. I'll explore a little bit. I might make a small series. So in total, the NT domain and all of its servers are going to fit within a 15U rack. Which I happen to have one of. So, that'll be cool. I kind of want to do some BBS software slash just running an NT domain because by God, they are pretty reliable. As much as I love Windows XP, I like simplicity and I like looking at older stuff. I want to try getting some 98 clients and 95 clients, and all that good stuff running under a domain. And see what kind of software I can run. It's kind of, it's kind of nice. Not necessarily games. More like productivity. It's like uh, I have a copy of, oh, is it Visual Studios 6.0 Enterprise? Yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna program, but I can certainly program. I want to do some old school web development. That was a lot of fun. Can't be too hard to program for the old. Uh... Oh, I see that little thing's busted. Oh well, I'll get it in there. Like I was saying, I want to get into some of the web design, ancient web design. Make sure all those are nice and tight. There we go. So, that's the main of the hardware. The RAID controller, and while it does have SCSI on board, this is a compact smart array 5300 controller. I don't think the batteries are good. There's some from China that are like 12 bucks I might get. And how big is this capacity? It doesn't say. So, whatever. We'll get there. I'm going to be using SCSI. I haven't used SCSI in quite a while. I get to set all the fancy pins and go through driver hell. It'll be good. I love that kind of stuff. But once it's set, it should be good to go. And the only other card in here currently is a gigabit PCIX card. So, I'm not sure if this has gigabit on the back or not so you have your ps2 your serial ports your uid usb 1.1 if i had to guess vga parallel port two ethernet i think one of them is the ilo yep right there that one and then a scuzzy so and then two 500 watt power supplies which is good i thought this thing would eat a little bit more power but if it's just 500 watts plus or minus the second power supply we should be good to go and over here this is your drives your hard drive at caddy area your five and a quarter of which it has three and if you wanted to see the cool oh it was open bam there are your numbers you can't read them because i don't have a high definition camera but you have your power button, network light. I believe those are for hard drives. I think that one's your bad one, this one's your good one. And then your UID to identify it in the rack. So, normal CD-ROM drive, IDE, no big deal. I'm thinking of upgrading it to a DVD, 
but I'm not sure. I'm not quite familiar with NT era hardware. I'm sure they existed, and I'm sure they were very expensive. So we'll go from there. But two more bays, six SCSI. I think they're Ultra threes. So U320, I believe, is the standard. These are just blank sleds. I was trying to get SSDs. There's a couple sites. They're not hardly made anymore because this is so old. But they do or did make SCSI SSDs. Three and a quarter. You could go from, oh, I'm sure a gigabyte upwards to 146 gigabytes if you really wanted to. The one site I had them, it was one of those like semi-sketchy sites. I think it was Memory for Less. And they had, they said they had them in stock. I wanted to get two, uh, well, one 48 and two 24 gigabytes for some of these other servers in the NT domain. But they said they were in stock. I placed my order. They said, all right, here's your confirmation number. I get an email saying they canceled it. They don't have them in stock. And I was like, all right, well, that sucks. I should have expected that. But they said they are trying to get them back in stock, and they did have some of the lower capacities, like the 8 gig or the 4 gig or whatever, which isn't really what I wanted for this. I wanted to kind of bump it up. I know NT can make use of tiny hardware by today's standards, which is good. But if this is going to be the mainstay, I wanted to give it a big SSD. The big isn't like 48 gigs to 24, no big deal. So we'll see. Otherwise, I'll just throw a pair of 18 or 72 gigabyte SCSI drives in here. I'm not sure if I'm going to rate it for the boot drive. We'll see what happens. Otherwise, I'll just take good backups. And then the rest are going to be 300 gigabyte SCSI drives. or like 24 bucks on eBay. I have a few of them. Actually, there was one I used in that HP Atanium build. But I gotta dig them out of a tall computer case that's just buried in my computer section, so I might just order more. And then we will go from there. This will probably be the main backup server, as well as an application server, depending on if I get Terminal Edition NT on here or not. But in the meantime, the only other piece of hardware is this tape drive, SCSI tape drive. And I was thinking, if I'm going to be doing SCSI anyway, I may just upgrade that CD drive to SCSI, and we'll go from there. I'll have to see. I'm not quite sure. I haven't used tape backup anyway, but I've heard it's very nice, and I'm willing to give it a shot. The tape drives aren't expensive. The tapes are even less expensive, even though this is going to be a 20 gigabyte tape drive. No big deal. That's quite a lot for NT and anything else from that era. But you basically go over here if you want to remove a drive, push down. And if I can pull it out, otherwise I'll just slide the bracket out. There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Slides out. I've already put the screws on the tape drive, but they're right here. So this is your blank caddy. It looks like you could mount a three and a quarter drive in there, no problem. Which I might do if I want to use all these for hot spares and just keep the boot drive in there. So I'll set this over on my computer pile of doom. We will slot this drive in. Of course, I'm crouching because I don't have a good workbench. And literally, just like that. It looks pretty good. We'll see about getting a second tape drive if I can back other media up onto the tape drive. And I don't see why I couldn't. So yeah, that's basically it so far. So I might try some other expansion cards depending on what I want to try. And this will just be a big old file application server as well as the domain controller. And then maybe, possibly, the DNS controller. We'll see what what happens. So when I get around to doing the software side, I will give you guys an update. And then we'll power it on and it'll make a shit ton of noise. And yeah, there we go. So thank you for watching this video. Appreciate it. If you have any questions or concerns, just leave them in the comments. Thank you. Bye.